The president of the Senate Leadership Fund, the group that is tasked with electing Republicans to the Senate, essentially to save Mitch McConnell's job as majority leader. Fair enough. Fair, Fair enough. Mm -hmm. All right. You heard you were name checked in there. Mm -hmm. He said you were going to have a tough time being able to spin sort of this political environment. Look, you're focused on Senate races. I hear as you look at Arizona eight, how concerned are you? For the Republican Party. Well, first of all, I want to thank both you, uh, Chuck, and, and Charlie for dramatically lowering expectations <laughs> for me this fall. Uh, I, I would say, and, and you know this, that, uh, that, that House races are fundamentally different from Senate mm -hmm. races for a variety of reasons, in part because Senate races tend to be somewhat more insulated from national trends, uh, mm -hmm. and we've seen that uh, in 2010, you mentioned, in, in particular, where Democrats lost the House but held the Senate. But in addition to that, the, the political terrain in the Senate is a lot more favorable for Republicans than it is in all these House sure. districts that were carried by a lot of Trump uh, states. Hillary Clinton. Right. A lot, got, lot of places. North yeah, Dakota, West Virginia, right. Missouri. I get that. And just the sheer number of states the Democrats have to defend. I mean, we've got three states on the line that I would think would be arguably competitive Nevada, Arizona, where Martha McSally just outraised her Democratic opponent by almost a million dollars, and then uh, uh, Tennessee. Uh, they've got uh, 10 states that could be competitive, five of them in states that, that uh, Donald Trump carried by uh, upwards of 20 percentage points. And so I think we've got a lot more terrain to play with that makes the task of defending the Senate majority. Uh, I wouldn't say easy, but uh, but a task that we think we can undertake and win. Are Republican donors starting to essentially make these tough decisions going, you know what, I like those guys in the House, but it's now time to do what can be done and, and focusing. Are you seeing more money coming to your side of this fight now? Yeah, we, we, we've actually been seeing it since the beginning of the year. And the first thing I would say is that I, I think it would be a mistake to abandon the House because in our business, it always matters where you return the kick from. And a... 30-seat deficit in the House is going to be a lot harder to make up than a smaller one, even if you thought that holding the House was was beyond reach. But the other thing that really motivates our donors is the importance of the Senate in terms of confirming Supreme Court justices. I mean, if, if we were to lose the Senate majority, yeah. I'm confident that Chuck Schumer would allow the Supreme Court to dwindle down to six justices before he would uh, confirm anybody. You would only have Mitch McConnell to thank for that strategic <laughs> idea. Well, both sides have yeah. uh, played that game. But uh, but nevertheless, I think there's a sense that uh, the, the, the third branch of government is absolutely critical to defend. And that, that really comes down to, the, to maintaining a Senate majority. And and that seems that is a big motivator for some of your donors. Absolutely. Judicial, is, yeah. uh, judicial nominations. Let me ask you about the Mick Mulvaney comments. I mean, the cynic in me says he just he made what we uh, used to be known in Washington as a Kinsley gla uh, gaffe, Michael mm -hmm. Kinsley, when when a politician accidentally speaks the truth, which is a donor is going to get a call returned before a non-donor does. But um, defend that on the trail. How do you do, how, how do you say Donald Trump's draining the swamp when the guy who's got half the jobs in Trump's cabinet, mm -hmm. the Consumer Financial Board, OMB, is saying, hey, give lobbyists, give more money. Yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people pay attention to what Mick Mulvaney says. I think particularly people who uh, supported Donald Trump because of, of his plan to shake up Washington were interested in a much larger portfolio of things that he represented. He's doing things differently. Uh, he uh, is uh, taking on North Korea and China and trade. He's doing things that even a lot of Republicans don't necessarily like, and he is shaking up the larger order. So I think when people heard Donald Trump say he's draining the swamp, it means a lot more, and they think that he's delivering on that. And so regardless, are you concerned, though, that they can, the Democrats can throw a reform message basically back in your face? Well, I, I think it's a lot bigger thing, particularly in states uh, that, that Donald Trump won. I think the, the, the dominant argument that, that we're going to be dealing with is, are the Democrats who are holding these Senate seats uh, going to be able to defend the fact that they've really fought this uh, president every step of the way in mm -hmm. states where those voters all voted for him and for his agenda. Is it, you know, one thing you haven't brought up on your own here mm -hmm. is the tax bill. Mm -hmm. Is it, are you past the point of return for 18 to make the tax bill a net positive for Republicans? Is it, is it too, basically the president sat on the sidelines too long and selling it? I think it's a little bit different than that. And, and I, I have a, a view of my own that, that not everybody has, which is I think that even if you were able to convince everyone that the tax bill was good for you, uh, I don't think people generally vote on gratitude. Okay. Uh, I think the much more compelling argument is to say that, look, we've had a recovery, we're creating jobs, and the tax cut's part of that, the regulatory agenda is part of that, and you've got a whole crowd of people that if they take power, they're going to repeal the recovery. And I think that's the argument that I think cuts better than saying, thank us by voting for us again. You, uh, you seem to be in one of these traps sometimes as an organization um, when it comes to these Republican Senate primaries. And um, on one hand, in 2010, the lesson was you let them, you let a thousand flowers bloom mm -hmm. and it cost you an opportunity to win the right. Senate. So this Mitch McConnell said, not going to let that happen again. And in 2014, he got very aggressive, 16, and you guys are getting aggressive again. But it's dividing the party. 
Um, it's some noisy primary fights that you have on your right. side. Indiana, West Virginia, you brought up Arizona. I think that's going to get noisy and messy. How involved are you guys going to be? Uh, I think when we see a choice between somebody who would certainly lose the race and somebody who would certainly win the race, we will sometimes get involved, but not in every case. It may not make uh, sense every time. Uh, we're strong supporters, for example, of Martha McSally. You just said Martha McSally. She's got two primary opponents, so you have right. already made that decision. You're for her. Well, we're for her. I don't know what we'll end up doing in that race, but it's, it's a very clearly, if you just look at the polling, there's one person who could beat Kirsten Cinema, and that's Martha McSally. A West Virginia, mm -hmm. are you more just against one candidate and you don't care what the other two do? Yeah, I think I think in each race it's it's completely different, and it's not necessarily ideological. It can be a personal resume, it can be you know things in their background that are problematic, as we saw, for example, in Alabama. There are certain people where you just simply can't get elected, no matter how good the state is, and you've got to sometimes take action there. All right, Stephen Law, I have to leave it there. It's going to be a wild ride. Uh, it's going to be you, fun. You've been on these before. You're having too much fun. I think you've now been involved in every <laughs> single Senate race twice yeah, as I, a campaign strategist. That. Well, elections are hard, 200, but they're enjoyable. 200 uh, Senate seats I think you've done. Anyway, mm -hmm. Steve Law, thanks for coming on and sharing your views, sir. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.